Yes, yeah, so I'll go check out bodychaos.com if you haven't done so already. There's a lot of tools. Uh, check them out. Let me know what you think. So we'll jump into development. So I have this uh, data from a Kegel competition. See how long I can uh, get away without uh, using a robot for programming. Probably not long. Anyway, we have this new project. It's called the uh, seizure fuzz. That's only because I need to have a limit of how many LinkedIn likes uh, 26 uh, characters of URLs before it starts shortening them into funny things. So I want to avoid that. Let's run this application quickly. Am I getting errors already? No, it's because it's already running, isn't it? Run it again. Okay, so that's how it looks like so far when we had the uh, I think two sessions that we spend on it um, in this one so we don't have a option to scroll this is a fairly large data set Let's remember how uh, big is it oh data is on my desktop so not very big can be too big then can it it's uh, 26 27 uh, gigabyte that shouldn't be too bad. So this is currently what the tool uh, looks like. You can select your EEG ID. Now that ID, yeah, that looks like a seizure there. It's actually an interesting one. What does it look like? So in here you can uh, select your uh, EEG ID. In this case, uh, 100, what is it? 110 seconds of uh, EEG data can select your channel so I'm not displaying all the channels there's uh, other tools that display all channels you can see examples this one just uh, displaying one uh, channel at a time just to you know uh, we'll be doing more uh, with this this actually looks a lot like a seizure the reason this is 110 seconds so you have those uh, 18 labels of uh, probably seizure you can open the original um, test csv it's actually the, uh, no sorry not tested the uh, train csv yeah about seven and a half uh, megabytes yeah that's what it looks like so say when we go uh six or four wherever it is Looks like a seizure to me that's why it's probably be a good example to probably have as a default uh, loading by default obviously it's impossible to search for anything in here a one five one seven one seven nine six right so we have yeah they all labeled as seizure there were only a three experts in this case five that's what i was yeah i was mentioning it uh, the other time i looked at the dust dust and it's a bit odd so you have uh, each one of those entries in the train csv file are meant to be 50 second long and then you have this uh, offset to it and it's that the uh, number there that will tell you in seconds what the offset is like so in my application theory when you do that it will select just the a 50 second window so it should be 58 to 166 that doesn't make sense that's over a hundred so we need to fix that but the point is yeah, it does the offset to begin with they're heavily overlaid on top of one another so if uh, yeah this 62 yeah i'm not convinced uh, i think it's just displaying the same data all the time it's just changing the x-axis a uh, six or four yeah the selector is not great but uh, you get the drift you can't expand it or anything anyway so you have those uh, this is the type of labels that we have we have seizure a gpd was a generalized uh, something something i think that would be lateral should have an explanation for all this 
we have our structure yeah that's the, that's the description it's just weird that the annotations say in this case were done uh, in most cases by three reviewers and they had the 100 percent agreement rate between them in terms of the labels so there's one two three four five six labels the sixth one is the ava in this case they have 100 percent agreement but then with the same data segment this uh, six or four at the end you also have a couple of labels a couple of epochs uh, 50 second segments that were labeled by five experts so i'm not sure why the whole five just didn't look at the whole thing considering again this would be 50 plus 62 second segment i don't know why it's essentially the overlap is very heavy so each one of those will be a 50 second window the first one will be starting at time zero and the second one time two time four six so on so forth so it's just uh, duplicating the data it's essentially it's fudging fudging the, the classic fudging of a data set where you're trying to duplicate more a uh, create more data when you don't actually have it all the labels are essentially in all these cases are the same anyway it's not clear why there were like three reviewers for some of them and five for others so you see essentially in these two cases a uh, three cases four reviewers said it's a seizure and one said it's other so no not the 100 percent agreement yeah this is an interesting case again you have a high duplication rate the um, whole data will be 74 seconds it's hard for me to actually find those in the drop down menu it's also after a while it's becoming a quite unresponsive so obviously not quite ready to be published i uh, have to make sure the expert consensus is actually updated when you select this one the idea originally the reason it's a drop down it's an input is that you can sell a uh, filter the eeg ids so you can just display uh, one of the labels like all the eeg ids for one specific label uh, that doesn't work at the moment uh, once you select an eeg id then you have those uh, different offsets and again just seem to be highly a uh, duplicated data essentially those in between would not be necessary you might get away with you know um, offset 0 and offset 18 because each of those is 50 seconds so you really don't need those in between uh, because this will be 0 to 50 this will be 2 to 52 so it's essentially the same the same time window then 4 to 54 6 to 56 yeah done no need no need you can just have the first and the last so you will have 0 to 50 and then 18 to what is it 68 that should be plenty <laughs> so essentially it looks to me like they're just trying to create more uh, data points when a uh, when there's actually in the data itself this one here for example i understand the rationale behind it yeah so th this is all the same a uh, data segment if you look at the raw file you just have uh, was it 50 plus uh, 62 whatever it is but then you'll have a lot of like duplicates of the same thing so in reality you could have had a 0 to 50 and then say this uh, uh, if you need some overlap of 10 seconds so you have 40 to 90 and that will cover it all so instead of having these 18 entries it's really just uh, two so ho hopefully it's clear what i'm trying to say if um, by any chance if anyone looked at this data set and i totally misunderstand what the data set is doing do let me know I should have a link to the data so eventually the plan is to continue with this data set we're not uh, we just take the data as is we can't change it um, and use the labels um, to eventually do a um, classifier we'll be using fuzzy logic so it's explainable ai stuff 
we don't want any black boxes we want to actually know what is it doing and then ah the data also contains these spectrograms there's like eleven thousand of them and they are 10 minutes long so we, let's see yeah, enough an example of how not to store your data yes yeah, so essentially those should display 50 seconds each one of those sub ids there's a few interesting examples there that's obviously uh, some of them have just crazy noise so i'm not sure one way to go about to see if you actually have ecg sometimes i mean the ecg electrode could be off um, but everything else might be working correctly that is uh, possible However, if you see a very noisy ECG like this, this is probably a strong indication that something, that other things are very wrong in this recording. So yeah, so if you see stuff like this in your ECG channel, it's highly likely that if you select, yeah, if you, um, if you look at the EEG recordings that you'll see some uh, high noise there as well just kind of indicative of problems so might start uh, filtering this data that way i just suspect that by the time we filter and when i say filter i'm not saying you know we won't be taking something is um, you know really bad and trying to improve it i'm saying like filtering is in getting rid of it yeah once you go down the list it's becoming less responsive which is obviously not ideal uh, hopefully um, one of the bots the uh, github copilot or gpt4 can fix all this for us there's many other tools uh, that are published on uh, bodychaos.com go check them out and let me know what you think yeah there's a big problem of the eg id becoming less responsive when you go you scroll down this list it's not great uh, we have that uh, we want this one i think it's a good example because i'm pretty sure uh, there is an actual more classic looking you know like a textbook um, look like um, seizure in that uh, segment so I want to use it as default for EEG ID. Uh, where can we set the default value that loads when the page is loading the first time? Yes, it's uh, determining workspace structure, deciding which uh, uh, files to look at. I found five references. I don't know why. And yes, it's just going for the index HTML. No, I just suspected that there is something in the script JS. And yes, it did look at the script JS. So I do. So I am confident that it's uh, giving you a legit response in the GID. I mean, it was biased because my mouse cursor was uh, already there. So it could be another reason that it's uh, just uh, uh, giving me that. We need to make sure when selecting the segment the expert consensus uh, is uh, updated uh, first of all we need to swap uh, places the consensus should come after the eg sub id because we have a label for each sub id not the general id so you have multiple ids and then the label like in this table you have it for each uh, each one of those so this is the label and you have it for essentially a, what is it that numbers id six of endings with six or four and then point one point two point three let's swap uh, between them the order we actually need the expert consensus to be updated when we select a different eeg segment we need it to show the label associated with that segment the label is in train csv file if you haven't checked bionicchaos.com go do so there's a lot of interesting tools and blogs and don't forget to provide your feedback after you checked it out 
Okay, let's see what it said. When the EG or sub ID changes, you should fetch the corresponding label. Here is a rough. Why is it a rough idea? Why is it not uh, the actual code? Okay, so it's already suggesting um, um, a get label function fetches a label for given each EEG and, and subject identifier. Try. Yep, it's retrieving that from train CSV. Looks legit. And uh, returning either label not found or the label, I would imagine. Yeah, label zero. It's assuming it's an array and it didn't actually work. No such file directory. What? Of course there is. A get label. So this is all uh, happening in the back end. Get patients IDs works okay. Let's try this. It's a folder thing, it can't find the file. No, it's not in the data path. It's in another folder. It should be doing that. It EF is not used. <laughs> no. <laughs> Should be ready to get label function in the data it is it's responsible. No, I do want to use it. <laughs> Don't just remove it. Don't just remove it. Yeah, the get label should also have a DF in it. DF in it, DF in it get label it's already using it over here get label definite and fix this one first just select the whole code and do the workspace as well because we need to eventually update the data utils uh, python code as well yes having trouble reading that file it shouldn't be a problem because it's already read elsewhere Hey, can we just do it in the same way as for the previous functions? It's not looking at the whole code. Okay, did it fix it? There's only one way to know is to run it. They're yeah, reading the CSV file, filtering the data frame, and returning the corresponding label. Okay, that obviously didn't work. Hey, can you update this based on the previous response? Errors. Boop, 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 boop. Should we do something more fun and get back to this uh, later? Or should we just continue banging our head, heads? Okay, let's continue <laughs> banging. Uh, bang on. Okay, it should be <laughs> simple. Why do I have a feeling GPT-4 will be able to deal with this? Okay, let's just... Uh, a pop this in can take uh, longer prompts can actually use the tokenizer tokenizer it's a good name isn't it let's tokenize it okay we only have uh, 2000 tokens it should be fine but the flask application 3000 data utils Three and a half. That's the structure of this data set. Two, six thousand. Do we need a info and stuff? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. What? What? So yeah. Just uh, listening to some uh, podcast. I don't remember the name, but essentially saying that uh, whatever is in the beginning and the end of the prompt. That's what. Uh, essentially has more likely chance to be picked up by the um, model anyways we have this uh, eight and a half thousand tokens it should be not too much for gpt4 to handle ah we forgot the errors let's pop in the i'm getting the following error above I shared all the codes, we have access to the entire project. Uh, can we fix this error first? It's to do with updating the expert consensus value. 
when a different uh, EG ID and sub ID segment of raw data was selected. So this one is not referring to, it is referring to data utils, but it doesn't have a get label. I think we can get rid of it, can we? In data utils, the get label function, can we get rid of it? I'm pretty sure it's a yes. Now we're still getting an error, a different error, still an error. The data is being displayed, which is great, but we're still getting an error. Well, first of all, most of the time, the label for same EEG IDs is always the same anyway. But yes, there might be a chance that it is not, so we still need to address it in the code. Currently, yeah, I'm getting this, uh, what's the default value? Yeah, 604 is the one that has something that looks like a seizure. Yes, it's working okay most of the time. The expert consensus is not being updated. The value is not being retrieved properly and I'm getting the following error. 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 Do I need to speak with the American accent, do I? How to update the code. We would like to move on and uh, develop it further. We will uh, need to load the spectrogram, spectrograms from the data set and then uh, start uh, training a fuzzy logic classifier to classify between different labels. Okay, we're back in business. It is working again. So now when you select, uh, so the default one is still that 604 that uh, has something that looks like a seizure. All these 18 labels have the same uh, uh, label. Hey, can you explain the code structure specifically? Sorry, can you explain the data structure specifically focusing on the fact that each uh, label is for a 50 second raw EEG data, but then the sub ID offsets seem to be very small. I just realized something. Yeah, another uh, potential indication of how bad uh, this uh, data set is, is when you load this default EG ID, select your sub ID, the all uh, seizure labels. This is what you get on different EG electrodes. Looks a lot like a seizure, but this is really zoomed out, so we don't uh, see the details. We'll be looking at the details later. Yeah, you get this slowing down of, uh, so it looks like spiking, and then it's also slowing down which is a good indicator, but then you look at the ECG and it has the same structure to it and the same uh, amplitude, which is highly unusual. <laughs> so, so this makes me think that it's more likely to be um, artifact. And yes, we need to look at the details of it, but uh, yeah, just highly unusual. The ECG seem to be still there, but then uh, this artifact should be coming from the brain, not the heart, if it is a seizure. So in this case, it will be either uh, most likely to be muscle activity. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a chance that there is a cardiological cardio event, but uh, that affecting the brain recordings. But yes, you don't expect to see ECG in your EEG. That's a really not good uh, sign. So, yeah. Uh, most likely just to be a bad uh, data point. Also, we need to make sure the patient ID is updated in the same way as the expert consensus. So when we select a different uh, EG ID and sub ID, the patient ID should get updated. The original idea there was that um, those will be inputs and uh, when selecting a patient, the EEG IDs will get uh, filtered to show data from only a specific patient or a specific label. However, that doesn't seem to work. If you have any ideas of how to fix it, do let know. We have an option to add a channel 
so then we can compare one of the EEG to the ECG uh, side by side. Or should we just continue to the spectrograms? I just suspect the whole, yeah, there's something wrong with this data set. Uh, altogether, there's a lot of uh, weird things. I can give, do a summary, but I found uh, uh, pretty much three uh, major red uh, red flags. Keep finding red flags, like this one. ECG is there. Uh, the fact that it's inverse should not matter, it's, it's fine. But then, yeah, this is what's happening on the left side of the head. And this is on the right, it's just a major artifact. And you have, um, yeah, I have a lot of trouble with those uh, labels. Yes, we will have uh, 64, yeah, 64, uh, sorry, 54 seconds in this data. And this is because, and they just overlap, they're essentially the same. It's 0 to 50, 2 to 52, and 4 to 54 uh, second windows. So as you can tell, they almost, was it 99.999% uh, overlap so i don't know why they're even there seems like a fudging data thing trying to make uh, big data out of a small uh, data set don't like it yeah in this case yeah th th this one is legit for this one we should be showing uh, 0 to 50 so it should go up to up to here and there's a label for it it's uh, labeled as uh, lpd a lateralized periodic discharges so that's okay and um, essentially th all those are redundant and then you could have say you know if you need a little bit of overlap you can have um, eight uh, eight seconds of overlap and this one will be essentially 42 to what's 50 plus 42 and uh, 90 uh, seconds so it'll cover the whole lot. It's still labeled as uh, LPD. Okay, so we might need an expert for this one. I don't know who those uh, expert are. Ah, the third uh, red flag was, uh, yes, yeah, so if we look at the, the original uh, train file, training file, so all the labels. Yeah, so this one here, it has all these uh, overlaps in it that are redundant. Could have just kept, uh, well, the first, and the last one yeah and the other thing was uh, how these labels are made six or four yeah this one so in this case uh, three experts uh, label this as seizure that's fine and you had 100 100 percent agreements but then three is not a large number i mean uh, three is, would be like the absolute uh, minimum because generally you will have uh, a two and if there's a disagreement between the labels you show it to a third one and then they come to some sort of consensus uh, it's actually not how you come to a consensus so they just do consensus by majority majority vote they have to kind of yeah convince each other so yeah in this case so this label there where's the current one and why is it not showing the current position and uh, no that's not it six or four right and then you have this um so it's seven seven one yeah this seven seven one it will have uh, 14 offsets and yes they were labeled as other but interestingly six experts still said it's a seizure and eight said it's other so does it mean yeah let's check the description again yeah so that's the bolting the count of annotated votes for a given brain activity class. So those are the the different types. Yeah, so in this case the ECG looks like. Okay, we need to make sure this um, display is always uh, locked to 50 seconds. But the patient ID is not updating properly. It's not changing. Yeah, EG ID is not being used. Just say update. Yeah, based on previous conversation is good. Sometimes it uh, discards what uh, previously was discussed. Yeah, but this one is still not being used. Uh, this still need to be updated, particularly the EEG ID and EEG sub ID are not actually being used. Uh, I like how it's just uh, getting rid of it. 
Yeah, GPT-4 doesn't do that. So if I mention it, I still want to use it. If I mention EEG ID and EEG sub ID, did you just remove uh, them from the code? Um, that's not cool. I do need them. So we want to retrieve the patient ID based on which uh, sub ID a segment of EEG was uh, actually selected. We need to know which patient this data is coming from. Okay, it's bringing them back. Now we're getting an error. Okay, patient ID is not actually being... I think we need to update the JavaScript as well. Do we need to update other parts of the code as well? Like the JavaScript? Yeah, that's the default, uh, default EEG ID. Uh, wait. Do we actually change the code? Hey, we are lazy. How to update the code based on previous responses? Yeah, want to fetch the patient IDs. Offline drop down. So is that where just updating the first time around? Then we need to do it again. To know why those are not links. <laughs> they meant to be. <laughs> Pretty sure that designed to be links um, so we're changing the inputs to those functions I don't think so okay now can we focus on how the input drop down menus are being populated and displayed and what happens when we change the values so originally the idea was that you can filter the data based on the label type or the patient that doesn't work at the moment we do need to make sure however that when we select a different uh, sub id and id of the eg data file we need to make sure that the con expert consensus and patient ID and all other parameters are being modified. The data should be retrieved correctly from the train CSV file. As you can see from the structure of the data set, we have other values in the train CSV file. Can you help me update the code? I need specific uh, code. In this case, you just see some uh, noise to begin with. And you have something that yeah, potentially looks like the R peaks in ECG. Apply drop down on page load, fetch and display related data. Update backend endpoints. Yeah, that needs to update the front end as well. Update your event listener for the EG ID and sub ID drop downs. When these values change, you should fetch and update the related drop downs accordingly. That sounds legit. Let's try it out. Obviously, I can't search. Well, I can search, it's just not as convenient. Yeah, so it's Every time you ask for something, it's uh, very likely to add additional functions instead of just fixing existing code. It's a bit unfortunate. I'm not giving up on this data set just yet. We'll have the review tool. The next thing will be visualizing the spectrogram data. I don't think I can generate it myself. I would have just generated the spectrograms myself. Because I did review some of the examples, they also don't look quite right. But we'll just have to load them. Uh, yeah, we just have to pass this uh, CSV file correctly. So someone, someone must have already done this, obviously. But uh, I don't have access to, to it. There's some example code on the Kaggle competition site but I don't necessarily trust it so I would like to understand the data ourselves anyway we kind of have to do this first 
yeah, the problem with this thing you end up with too many functions. Yeah, every time you ask for something, it's generating a new one. Instead of fixing existing code, you're still getting an error. No, we're not getting an error. Yes, we are getting an error. So I, I didn't implement the the code correctly. So the safest thing to do is to pop in the JavaScript and the Python code into the LLM again and give it also this error code. Yeah, get patient's ID obviously. There's a problem with it. With it. It made it simpler, which you would think is better. So the first time around we get no errors, which is great. We have this default thing that looks like a seizure, but then I'm not sure because the ECG also has something that looks like a seizure, which is highly suspicious. As as we know, ECG shouldn't have any seizures in it. So it's either something is really wrong. We'll have to test this. The other thing I'm trying to make sure is that yeah, when you select a specific sub ID or a specific ID, it doesn't matter. We get the seizures being updated correctly. The label being updated correctly. Maybe, maybe not. Oops, just pop it into GPT for the corresponding code. Something is really wrong. We added a new function and changed an existing one. So it looks like we added a new function and changed an existing one. The tool is working okay on first page load. But later when they're selecting a different EG ID or different EG sub ID, I'm getting the error above. So the recent change they broke the code. How do we fix it? Yep. Yes, we change get patient ID and we also there's something yeah, something silly. Let's get in to uh, displaying the spectrograms here as well doing some uh, processing and training a fuzzy logic classifier it is actually working now let's test it some more yeah so uh, just needed to make sure the patient id is being updated when we select a different uh, eeg id so we have 61262 uh, let's check this random one seven nine five five let's go to uh train csv table pop in seven nine five five too many of those why seven nine five five zero yeah oh eight four seven we want to check yeah, that will be the patient ID. Yep. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, this one has interesting labels as well. Uh, so let's see. Let's just see that everything matches. We have those 9, uh, 999 uh, rows in the data. So 9 labels. Again, highly suspicious. Each one has to should be 50 second data. So we actually need to make sure this window is only 50 seconds. So this will be 0 to 50, and this will be 4 seconds to 54 seconds, which is highly unusual because as you can tell there's a whatever percentage, almost 100 percent overlap. And then you have all these duplicates, 6 to 56, 8 to 58, I think, if I understand the data correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So we really just needed the first that goes 0 to 50 and the last one that goes 26 to uh, 76. And this is unusual because you would expect the whole data to go to 76, but it's going to 134. 
that's not right. Let's check the original. So we have this one as default. It's going to 107. And what's the uh, 62 plus 50? Something is wrong, isn't it? So we have 112. No, that's correct. Yeah, so you have uh, 0 to 50. And this one will be going 62 to 112, yeah. So each uh, of those sub-IDs will be 50 seconds. That's, by the way, means that you only need the first one. And probably, say, if you had 0 and 12, you cover the whole data. So you don't, really don't need the 18 of them. Instead of 18 data points, you should have just had 2. Because if overall you have... A hundred and twelve seconds you essentially have a two fifty second segments yeah you could have had all three of them doesn't matter you know what I mean yeah you should have had three three of them uh, because it should have some overlap is okay but not this much overlap this one is like nine almost like hundred percent overlap two seconds overlap out of uh, out of uh, one uh, out of 50 what's the whatever percent that is so you can could really ignore a uh, get rid of the sub id one two or could have just kept uh, yeah one say 10 and 17 so you could have kept just 0 10 and 17 and you would be covering the whole data the other interesting thing is the label itself so in this case uh, can we display the first row as the title you know how to do it in uh, libre office someone knows how to do it yeah essentially want to display all this stuff so we obviously can't change the data it is the way it is it was uh, supposedly generated by harvard medical school so yeah, you have to take that word for it and so other things we're not yet looking at is uh, the spectrogram id the spectrograms, yeah, there's another data folder for those. I think they're 10 minute files. Check spectrogram ID, unique identifier for the entire EEG recording. Okay. Well, EEG, they, I mean, they should um, correspond to one another, right? Well, yes. There are examples of sample figures yeah this is what the first figure looks like and as you can tell yeah there's something wrong yeah i went over this already at time zero you have this um, a lower uh, frequency component but there's nothing in the time series i mean this time series as well because it's the uh, time and frequency energy this indicates that you should have something in the whatever four whatever five ten hertz there but the the raw eg looks the same throughout and there were 20 seizures labeled in this data um yeah yeah they're not being quite transparent that about this yeah let's turn it into a table and filter being able to filter different components but which one has 20 seizures in a row yeah don't really know how to use it maybe we'll just use python so we we need to display all the data correctly here anyway are you still transcribing not anymore Hey, can you look at the two images uploaded? Hey, tell me what the difference between them. One is for ECG, the second one is for ECG, and the first one is for one of the EEG electrodes. Let me know if you see something unusual in it. Yeah, so that's the thing about it is that the overlap is only okay. Well, so much overlap is only okay if the labels are different. But I don't think there was an intention to label them differently. Like if all of these things are 
label this seizures. Uh, that's uh, wrong because this should have been say no seizure, seizure onset, uh, end of seizure, and the quiet after the seizure, which actually seem to be legit in this case. If those are seizure spikes, uh, they are more frequent, larger amplitude to begin with, then they're slowing down, and then you have a quiet after the storm. So, looks legit. Could be there is an ECG in the channel, but then there is also this seizure is in it. So yeah, it would have uh, made sense as well. Uh, potentially, yeah, this could have affected the the heart rate. So yes, you could have had a higher a heart rate during seizure. That kind of makes sense. In this case, I still suspect something is wrong. I suspect maybe this uh, electrode label is not correct. Yeah, I'm retrieving it all from the data itself. Yeah, if you haven't checked bionicchaos.com, please do so. There's a lot of interesting tools in there. Well, hopefully you will find them interesting as well. And uh, don't forget to let me know what you think yeah there's no age we would expect the uh, age in there the patient id it's quite a lot of patients the ids are a bit odd i'm oh, sorry i was looking at label label id it's different than sub id and label id label ids that's a good description isn't it label id an ID for this set of labels. Well, patient ID is clear. Patient who donated the data. So patients donated the data. Okay. Yeah, the expert consensus, they should have explained how they reach consensus because it's, uh, yeah, it's just this majority, majority vote. There's no, uh, in this case, there was 16 reviewers. Uh, one voted LPD, one LRDA. One voted other. Yeah, this one's really interesting one. It had five voting GPD, five voting other, one voting G R D A, and the consensus vote instead of other is labeled as a GPD. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it. If anything, you you should have went the default the uh, other, so essentially ignore it, because you don't want to put the uh, weight on it. I assume that's correct. Yeah, those votes is the count of the annotated votes for a given brain activity class. The full names of the activity classes: uh, yeah, lateralized periodic discharges, generalized periodic discharges. So this is throughout the whole brain. A lateralized uh, specific area of the brain rhythmic delta so we, we we would be able to see that CLRD there's no seizure idea see what the GPD I don't get it how there were 10 seizures labeled and now and 9 G GPDs in the same um, 10 minutes worth of recording. Um, yeah, it looks like there's something happening there in the spectrogram, but it's not visible in the raw data. The ECG is a total mess. Um, LPD. What's LPD again? Lateralized periodic discharges. Yes, yeah, so the lateral area there. No, it's left, right, left lateral, right lateral. Yes, yeah, so there's something, if that's what they mean, um, if the LPDs, yeah, they are lateral, because they're only happening here and there on both left and right side. There should have been really a distinction as well between like unilateral, bilateral. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily, not sure why they break it down this 
Anyway, stream later. So I'll see you in a bit. Bye.